Uh, yeah, I'm sure we could be discussing this for hours and we'll have an opportunity also later with Mike. He's here until uh, Saturday, I think, or yeah, Saturday. Early, I have to be at the airport, but probably four yeah. in the morning. Well, okay, Friday and tomorrow there's a round table and we still have one question, but then we will need to give some time for the translators to uh, to take a rest before Watmo because they're doing their job the whole day and probably they're really exhausted. So uh, here is the other question, and I hope this is the, the, the I think it's the last. I have two questions, uh, <laughs> short ones. The first is uh, the problem of the international system within which the socialist projects are supposed to be realized. For example, you have criticized Lenin several times and emphasized all the defects of his political project. But in, the, in a highly competitive international system with numerous political and concrete military challenges, it is hard to imagine, that is the, the question, how to develop in the direction that you have just described, especially regarding the uh, need for creating an economically viable system in an extremely short time span that is a completely new, non-existent system being built through planned political action. So that would be the question. And could you relate this question to the concrete situation in Venezuela and to its foreign policy and its relation to the US, to the US and the danger that a party that is a part of the uh, uh, modern international system necessarily develops some features of other political actors in that system. Thank you. Okay, I'll try to answer that. Um, first of all, let me clarify that I was not criticizing Lenin in general and on the questions that you're posing. Uh, I was criticizing one particular interpretation in, the, in, in State and Revolution. Uh, you have to remember that Lenin took different positions at different times. He was a master of theorists of the conjuncture of str strategy. And in his work on cooperation, Lenin very clearly talks about how we, you know, that we can build on cooperatives. We can create a cooperative process by providing subsidies, favorable bank rates, etc. And we can build on that up. I think that the policies that were adopted under NEP, which were necessary, uh, were in fact the correct you know, decisions under those particular circumstances. And Lenin was very clear in saying, and it's a process of self-criticism, we have ignored the potential of cooperatives. So we have to, you know, I want to speci be specific that this is one particular thing that I'm criticizing in, in Lenin, not Lenin in general. Um, okay, the question of um, the problem of, of an international system, um, I don't deny that, you know, that under conditions in which you are, you know, threatened with, you know, uh, subversion and worse uh, attack, you have to be able to deal with that. Um, I completely reject the argument that was made during the Soviet Union in, NEP, in the NEP period that there was an emergence of an internal capitalist threat. Uh, I mean, when you analyze who the kulaks were, uh, about 30% of them were widows who, who hired wage laborers you know, to, to, to work their, their family you know, at farms, uh, and a very substantial portion of the wage laborers were in fact young people, you know, about 15, who were work, you know, fought, working at that. There was no emergence of an internal capitalist threat in the Soviet Union, which necessitated the rapid you know, development of productive forces. But there was an imperialist threat. And that's the condition under which I think there was a justification of, of a big push. Whether that push was you know, uh, self-defeating is another question, the way in which it was done. Because after all, you know, the, the level of farm animals you know, in, in the Soviet Union didn't recover to its 1928 level until the 1950s. Uh, you know, because of all the destruction, the, the destruction of productive forces that occurred in that process. So, but 
understanding the international you know, process is, is a real problem, a uh, threat, is a, a real con you know, concern. Uh, concretely, what is happening in Venezuela? Um, for, in general, let me talk about the internal and then the external issue. Uh, there is an attempt to build all three sides of that socialist triangle. Um, there is, for example, you know, definitely an increasing amount of state ownership. Uh, the state has taken firms and enterprises that were privatized and has renationalized them. Uh, now, it's done this very easily because it had money to pay for it. These aren't, you know, uh, it's, it, it's able to pay with the oil revenues, you know, for retaking the steel industry, retaking the, uh, the telecommunications industry, and all these basic industries uh, that are now under state ownership. Uh, furthermore, there is a definite emphasis and move toward worker management. Uh, and there's a, that's a big struggle in, in Venezuela right now because the ministers in charge of the uh, of state sectors and the state managers have sabotaged this, despite the fact that Chavez keeps calling you know, and responding to the demands of workers for worker management, and Chavez you know, responds and says that, and he said just in July, you know, well, I can give you a, a little incident, you know, uh, workers, uh, there was a series of meetings in this area, a resource-rich area where there are a number of state enterprises, the, the, uh, in the state of Bolivar, which is in the, in the area called Guayana. Uh, and there was a meeting organized by the planning minister and the labor minister for workers in these industries to meet to talk about what would be necessary to create a socialist economic plan. You know, for this area. Now, that was instituted in part because after the nationalization of the steel industry, uh, a renationalization of the steel industry, because of the demands of workers, uh, the workers immediately began to talk about, you know, how they would have worker management. And our institute, which is the uh, Central International Miranda, we were, we were running weekly seminars and roundtables with the workers talking about planning that process. Uh, so, the, the workers in the steel industry were pushing on this. Uh, so there was this meeting, uh, a, a panel uh, in which they had 10 work tables of you know, the workers discussing problems of how they would create you know, a socialist economic plan. And it was all on television uh, when they made their reports. So one table after another would make a report saying, we have to get rid of these managers who are, in fact, fighting us. They are, in fact, people from the Fourth Republic. They oppose everything. They are anti-worker, et cetera. Everybody would cheer. You know, the next table would come up and say, we have to nationalize all these intermediary firms, the briquette producers, who produce, who are, you know, taking some of the outputs of some firms and then selling it to the, another state firm, and they're making the profits. They're, they're creaming everything. We have to take them over. Cheers, you know. And so one half, and they got more and more radical, you know, and I knew some of the people, you know, who were the, making the reports to the table. So Chavez is sitting there. He's there. And he's taking notes, poker face. Not a, not a crack of a smile, nothing happening. And he gets up after they're all three, thanks them for their contributions, and he says, we have to nationalize. We're going to nationalize all those firms. Cheers. We're going to get rid of all these worker, all these managers who are, in fact, thwarting this process. Cheers. I mean, the, the excitement was incredible, and suddenly the workers there, and there were about, I guess, about 200 workers there, uh, sort of break out spontaneously and singing the national anthem, and they all shout, "This is the way we govern. This is the way we govern." You know, you get that kind of incredible process all on television. Now, ironically, you could see Chavez's speech with the reaction on YouTube. What you don't get is that he's responding to the demands made by workers because the state, you know, simply said, well, we're just going to show Chavez, you know, that's, that's what we'll put on YouTube. But, so Chavez says, two months from now, you have a socialist economic plan. Okay, two months pass, the workers meet in their work tables, transcend, you know, transcend the firm, you know, line, so aluminum workers meet with steel workers on how they can integrate their enterprises, they're in a planning process. And what you, in fact, find, then, is a situation in which they come up with a plan, they send it up to the managers, and the managers sit on it. Nothing happens. And so the workers are getting very upset. This was in, in May last year. 
Uh, Chavez calls 